And so what does your center do? Uh, the Center for Biologics is responsible for regulating biological products. That includes uh, therapeutic products, that includes vaccines, uh, allergenic products, blood, and tissue. And your division of it? And my office is responsible for vaccines and related products. Those related products are such products like probiotics, uh, allergenic extracts, uh, products of that nature. And so the, the FDA as a public health agency, how does your work support that? Uh, my work supports that, supports that in the sense that we're responsible for facilitating the availability of safe and effective uh, vaccines, in my case, for, because of my office and, and related products. Uh, we're involved in uh, evaluating those products, ver basically reviewing the dossiers from manufacturers, but we also are involved in testing and doing research on uh, a variety of different products. We have both uh, a, a research and uh, laboratory component of our office as well as uh, uh, desk reviewers. Our office is composed of a variety of uh, uh, in individuals in different expertise, such as uh, clinical reviewers, medical officers, nurses, epidemiologists, uh, statisticians, microbiologists, virologists, immunologists, the whole nine yards. And you're a microbiologist. And I'm a microbiologist. And you've been a little busy with H1N1, I guess. Yes, just a little bit, uh, H1N1. But it's, it's not, this is nothing unique for us. I mean, the pace might be unique, but uh, we deal with influenza on a yearly basis. So we pretty much know the drill. And then I'd say in the last uh, four or five years, uh, preparing for a pandemic uh, through uh, various activities with the seasonal influenza has prepared us for to deal with H1N1. So it's, it's a lot of work, but uh, we know the drill. We were really ready for this, weren't we? We were ready for this, <laughs> but we didn't know what it was going to be, as we never know what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we started out, uh, we, we had a test. We had a test with the drill because we started out with H5N1, as you would commonly call the avian influenza. And a number of people and scientists predicted that that might be the next pandemic. So we prepared, not only at FDA, but throughout the various agencies within the Department of Health and Human Services. So we were actually ready or, or get it in the process of being ready to handle a pandemic if it was H5N1. And we were somewhat surprised that it turned out to be H1N1, but same drill, so we were prepared to uh, move into action on H1N1. And, and when a vaccine is made, um, CBER scientists are actually part of helping to develop the seed strain and those kinds of things, correct? For the influenza, right, right. for we're, we're um, influenza is, is really, t really unique because we are intimately involved in the preparation of reagents, seed strains, and, and what have you for uh, the preparation of that vaccine. Unlike other vaccines, I mean, we may be doing research in, in, in preparations of master cell banks and master seeds, but we're not, the manufacturers are not in general using those particular uh, reagents to make their products. They may, uh, that helps us test the product and, and be prepared to understand those products. And what, what, what does the future look like? There are just the huge amounts of uh, challenges have ha ahead. Even if we think about how do we understand, most of the vaccines, we, we have somewhat of an idea of mechanisms of how they work, but we really don't have a, a clear understanding of, of how all of these products, will, uh, uh, how they work. I mean, we understand that they're effective, we understand that they're safe, but what is the mechanism, what are the pathways that these uh, products follow? So I think the, the, uh, the field of immunology is really uh, blossoming and is gonna help uh, us understand uh, how some of these products uh, are effective in the future. Why is that kind of knowledge important? We know that many of these vaccines elicit some type of cell-mediated immunity, and having a better understanding of that, we can uh, target vaccines for those areas, and then also we can develop assays to better understand the contribution of those antigens to uh, eliciting immune responses from uh, the cell-mediated immunity. So it seems as though that you have a unique view of the world. You do a lot of, at least, some basic research on all of this and, and so that you can understand the products that come to you to be regulated. 
Yes, that's correct. And I think we, we also have a unique view uh, because our staff, most of our staff uh, started in a laboratory or in a clinical setting, a hospital or some other clinical setting. So we have our, our staff, are, uh, they have the ability and the knowledge base to evaluate these products. I mean, we, and even when new technologies come about, we have the, uh, the knowledge base to understand and ask the appropriate questions uh, about uh, how, these, how these products might work, how these technologies might be applied to these different products. So it puts us in a very unique position, unlike some other national regulatory authorities across the world. I mean, the expertise in FDA is in the FDA. We, we, we grow our own, we hire the experts from the outside, but we have them in-house. So we don't have to sort of contract out to, uh, for that expertise. We have the expertise in-house. Because we have an awesome responsibility when someone goes to the doctor and or a health a healthcare setting and, and and gets gets a shot to protect them from something they expect it to work and it to be safe and go home and be protected. Absolutely. Although we have to admit that you know products are not 100 percent safe and effective, but I mean that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you.